Hey, how's it going guys? Um, in this video, we're going to be creating a full Monstack, Monstack application. Um, so MongoDB, Express, React, and um, MongoDB, forward dimension that. Yeah, I don't know. Full Monstack application. Um, I got a few requests in my last tutorial series to do so. And um, yeah, so let's do it. The kind of application we'll be creating is this one right here. I searched for projects list UI and I got this thing right here. Um, it's kind of clean, it's really simple, and it'll be easy to create. So yeah, we're going to do a couple things, right? So the MongoDB database will store a list of projects, and um, using the Create button, um, we're going to be able to send projects to the database, and then um, from this component right here, we're going to be able to retrieve all the data from the MongoDB database, right? Um, yeah, let's get started. I did write a few short notes for myself, just so like I know what to like do, and you can follow this as well. But let's do it. So the first thing I want to do, I created a folder on my desktop called Projects More, and you can call it whatever you want. But in here, you want to create two folders, one for the front end and um, one for the back end. Back end, right? And um, let's let's open this on Visual Studio. So code that. So that basically means open it in the current directory. But um, yeah, so we have the application open here and um, there's a couple things I want to do, right? Um, wait, now that I think about it, I think it makes sense to do the back end first, then the front end. Yeah, we're going to work with the data, create the data and stuff, and then um, do the front end and then probably API or something. We'll see, but back end first. Yeah. So um, what I want to do is cd into the back end and then um, I'm going to say npm i. So npm install, save it to the package. No, wait, first you have to npm in it, right? So that will create as a package for JSON. Um, what happened? Enter. Why does it look weird? Um, entry points, I'm going to say server.js since I want to use server as my main entry points. So for the rest, you can just enter. Why does it look weird? But okay, anyway, so um, we did get our package for JSON. And um, what I want to do now is install a couple packages right so it's going to be an express application so we're going to install express and um, we're going to install course and we're going to install mongo so yeah mongo is just for it's going to help us connect to a mongodb database it's going to be like the middleman right um and that save that so while it's installing let's go ahead and initialize our mongodb database so mongodb mongodb.com and then in here, you want to sign in. If you don't have an account, um, use the create, uh, try free. If you do already, then sign in. I already have an account. But yeah, I'm going to sign in with Google. Actually, let me just move this over um, to the different screen. Email someone. All right, since it's signing in. All right, there we go. So yeah, all I did is just sign in and um, it's going to bring you to the dashboard. And once you're on the dashboard, um, it's going to create Project Zero as a default project. I'm just going to create a new project um, for the current one that we're working on. And um, I'm going to say, um, what do I want to say? I want to say projects slash more because that's what, we, that's what I call my folder. You can, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But next, um, I do not want permission. So next. By the, the way I'm going to explain everything might not be perfect because the last time I created a full stack application was probably over an year ago. Over an year ago. And yeah, I use Firebase for every project of mine. And um, yeah, it's serverless. That's the reason I use it. It's easier to set up and it's a lot faster to use as well as in to set up and stuff. So I just prefer it more. You can do everything to do with authentication, storage, database, cloud functions, um, whatever you can think of, you can do it with Firebase. So yeah, I do use Firebase. But yeah, since our project has been created, let's go ahead and build a cluster. Um, I'm going to use the free one. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't need to alter this. So let's just create a cluster. And um, it's going to take about two to three minutes. So while that's happening, let's go back to application, right? Um, there's a couple of things that I want to add. I'm going to add a type of module here um module module and then for the start so we have test i think the start is default but i'm just gonna do it right so for the start i'm gonna say um i'm gonna say um node 
node.js server.js and server is going to be our starting point. Um, save. So um, start there. And then inside of back, and I'm going to create a, the file server.js. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to create the file um, model.js. And um, the model is just going to be how our schema will look like for the database. Um, we're going to do that later. But um, um, what do you want to do? So let's go to a server.js and let's put out like steps of what we want to do, right? So it's also, um, so step one that we want to work um, code is um, to all the imports, obviously. Um, step two, so imports, no, bro. Import step two is gonna be, um, I think, um, initializing the Express application. So initialize Express app. Step three, no, step three, well, I can't type right now. Step three is going to be to probably initialize the database. Initialize database. And then step four, which is going to be the last step, it's just going to listen, right? So so if we run on port, um, whatever port we want, we're going to listen to that port and run it on there. But um yeah let's do it so step one i want to import express from express and then also want to import course from course and then i want to um, import mongoose from mongoose yeah so express application okay ex mongoose from mongoose okay and mongoose is basically for uh, mongoose is basically for the database connectivity right um yeah i think i think those are the important one next we want to um initialize our express application so it's just going to be the configuration which is going to be um const app is equal to express yeah that's that's it but we want to add a couple more things so we're going to define our port so what port to run on um is equal to i'm going to say port 9000 um yeah, it's all I like to run my backend on port 9000 and front end on port 3000. So yeah, that if you're running on production, so you want to do process um, dot environment. So dot env dot port. So I'm just going to add that in. But if that does not exist, let's use port 9000. So since we're doing development and not uh, production, so it's going to be port 9000. But um, yeah, and then we're going to add a few um, middlewares, um, which is going to be app.use. So we're going to use a few, which is cores and app.use um, express.json. Right, express.json. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm just going to comment this out as well, just so we know what we're doing. Um, middleware. So that's it so with that we've initialized our express application and that should work now but not yet we actually have to run it right so we have to listen so to listen um we're gonna say um app dot app dot app dot app dot listen and then it takes two it takes one parameter which is the ports the second is optional which i'm gonna give it as a callback function and the second parameter i'm gonna say um just a basic console log so once our app has started um just console log um something right so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna use uh, that um, listening on port um, and the port right there. So when our app runs, it's gonna listen on port port three thousand. I think that should do. Let's run npm start now. npm start. Give us a listening. No. Hmm. Um. Oh, I didn't save it. Okay. Okay. NPM start. Listen, and there we go. So we've created a full um server right there with just a few lines of code, right? Um, pretty simple. So next thing what we want to do is initialize our database. Actually, before we initialize, I'm gonna have a route just to see that we are actually learning it, just so we can see it visually, right? So for the routes, I'm actually gonna have it in the same file. So um, I'm going to say for routes. So the routes are basically like what happens if um, we're going to use routes for like posting to the database, um, fetching from the database. It's going to give us a link and um, just the initial um, default route, right? So for the default route, that's what we want to test right now. 
let's change this to five it's just a comment it doesn't matter but i'm gonna say after get so if we get the home page right and the home page is basically like just slash right which is nothing right so if we get the home page we want to do something right it's gonna oops what did i do after home page okay it's gonna do something right so we want to get the we'll get the request and response and then what we want to do is um so when we get the home page all we're going to do is just send back a response right so we're going to say response.send um, let's give it a status as well so a 200 which is for success um dot send um um just a hello or whatever you want to write so save let's restart the server npm start listening to port 9000 and if you go to port 9000 localhost 9000 we get a hello there so yeah we've created a server we can see that it's working right so the next thing they want to do is fill in like a couple blanks right so one being this one right here initialize database so let's do it so to initialize da the database um let's go back to a database right there on mongodb um we created the cluster what we want to do is click on connect we want to allow access from anywhere um so we want to add the ip address um Give it a username and password so i'm just going to give it a user and user make sure if it's in production um you don't want it to be that but just for security but create database user and then choose connection method and then connect with mongo shell yeah i want to connect it to our application and then right there so pay attention to this right so this is going to be the line of code that connects to a database right um if you want we're gonna write it all down but if you want um this entire code is what we're gonna write you can just copy and paste it i'm actually gonna write it all down just so we know what we're doing right um so let me copy this and then no not there and then um go to application and um, i'm gonna create a constant um i'm gonna say mongo uri uri uh, uri is equal to that so that's the one line of code that's going to be our uh, it's it's going to have to be secure you're going to have to write your password in right here and it's going to help us connect to our thing so my password is user um and for the database i don't have a database yet so let's go ahead and create a database right so how do you do that i think you go into collections and then the one benny database so let's add it on i'm going to call it my database that's what i do and for a collection i'm going to call it my collection you can call it whatever you want right it's just your database name and let's create so that's done right so we called our database my database i should have capitalized the d but yeah whatever so yeah that's it so that's the line of code that you need um replace the password right there and your database name and then i'm gonna copy one line of code that it was there on the initial configuration that i mentioned before um yeah so what this does is it's just a connection so we're going to say mongoose.connect so this is what we're connecting and then we're going to pass in the uri which we created the variable and um yeah some parameters that's there in the documentation i don't even know what it is probably i haven't looked into it but yeah some of that and um yeah that's going to connect our application right and it's hopefully going to work but one thing that i want to do just so we know that it's working i'm going to say so once it's connected, I want to do something, right? So I'm just going to say mongoose dot connection dot once. Um, so once we've connected, um, what do you want to do? So once the database has been opened, um, it's going to take a callback function. So let's do that. So mongoose dot connection dot once on open, right? So when when the database has been opened, let's take a callback function. And what do you want to do? So basically, the callback function runs like this. So once it has been opened, run the second part of the function. So in there. I'm gonna just gonna console log console dot log um, database connected save and um, yeah let's restart and pin start hopefully that should work listening on port database connected there we go so we've connected to the database um, to this one right there and um, that's like probably ninety percent done for our front end right. Um, yeah what do you want to do um let's try and actually post some stuff to the database so there's a get request if you want to get stuff and there's a post request if you want to post stuff or if you want to like 
poster right to the database. So let's create two. Since we're going to be working on the projects itself, let's open this UI. I'm going to have the data, uh, the backend in this, um, um, in this um, video and the front end in the next video. So since we're just going to be posting a project and retrieving a project, we're not going to do anything else, right? Um, we're not going to like have search and sorting and all of that. We're going to create a UI, but we're not going to add that to the functionality. Um, but we're going to create and uh, post and get, right? So let's try it. So um, let's see. I want to um, post something, right? Um, let's post some, something. Since we don't have anything in the database, so let's post something and then we'll try and retrieve it, right? So get and um, post. Post, okay? So here's how we post, right? Um, I'm going to say after post, after post, right? So I want to post something. And then you give it to URL. So this is any URL you want. I'm going to say something like um, if we get a URL slash new slash project. So if you get a new project URL, uh, URL um, let's do something, right? So let's give it a function. It's going to get back a res request a response. Um, so the, yeah, it's going to get a request and response and then it's, a callback function, so let's do something. So inside of that, um, um, what do we do next? So we want to get what projects you want to post, right? So we're going to say const, I'm just going to give it project um, data is equal to request.body, right? And the request.body is basically when I access or when I post to this URL, I'm going to pass in some data, right? It's probably some JSON file, some object. And that's going to be, that's going to come from the request, right? So I'm going to say request and whatever's in the body, which is going to be the JSON, let's take it. And then let's just post it, right? So, um, oh, we have to create a model first. So um, let's go to a model. So the model is basically how we want to structure our database. So let's, let's do it. It's, it's quite simple. So mongoose from mongoose. Um, and then I'm going to say const, const um, schema is equal to, um, so I'm going to say mongoose.schema, schema, and then let's, it's going to have an object, right? So this is just a structure. So what's a project going to have? It's going to have, so if you look at that background, it's going to have an image. It's going to have a title. It's going to have probably a caption. Yeah, just an image, title, and caption. Um, image title caption. We're not gonna, we're gonna create the buttons, but we're we um, we're not gonna like make it functional functional, right? So yeah, just that. We're not gonna attach a link to it. So just an image title and caption. Let's do it. So I'm gonna say image, um, which is gonna be a string. So we're gonna pass in an image link. We're just gonna Google an image. Um, I'm gonna say title or project name, whatever you wanna call it. That's also gonna be a string. And um, I'm going to say caption or description, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be a string. So, yeah. So, the, the field name and the type. So, the type is going to be a string. So, that's what it's going to accept. And the field name is going to be whatever you want to call it, right? So, those are three. Once we do that, we just want to export it. So, export default um, mongoose dot model dot model and then give it a name. So I'm just going to say projects, um, and then you want to give it the schema that you created right there. So schema, um, yeah, so let's save it and let's import it back into our main um, server. So let's go into the imports, and then I'm going to say import, um, import. I want to import the model from that file. Um, yeah, import model from model, and then um, what happens next? Import model from model. I think that's it. So let's go back to a post request, and um, yeah, right there. So now I'm gonna say, so take that model, which is just um, the um, structure, right, of how we want to store our data. I'm just stretching my leg. Sorry. Oh, bloody hell! I'm tired. Okay, so model, and we're gonna create now, right? So model dot create. What do you wanna create? We wanna create some sort of. We wanna create this project, which is gonna be project data. So, um, which is gonna be project data. 
um, and then um, again, it's just going to take back, give back a function. So we're either going to get an error back or some sort of data back, and let's do that, right? So again, callback functions are basically like created a function, right? You, it takes one parameter as um, a compulsory parameter, right, which is a required the project data. The second parameter is a callback function that runs after the first one has been created. So after it has created a project data, this function runs in an asynchronous manner after it has done the first part, right? So it's going to return back an error or a data, right? And um, what do you want to do? So we want to say, if we have an error, um, it's this is a simpler way to create an if statement. So if we have an error, we're going to response. So response. So the response is we for back, so you know how on the front end we're gonna call this API, right? How do I explain it? So on the front end we're gonna call this link, okay, and we're gonna pass in some data with the request. Now we're gonna send a response back to where we got it from, where we got this link from, right? So we're gonna say response dot status, okay, um, five hundred, which is a successful status that comes from a database. Um, dot no, sorry, that that's an error that comes from a database, uh, an error. So if we do have an error. We're gonna say 500, which is a database error. Um, so we're gonna give it a status um, dot send, um, and we're just gonna send back the error, whatever we got, right? But if there is no error, what we're gonna do is we're gonna send a success status back. So um, response to status 201, which is now a success that comes from a database. Um, this is optional, I think. Yeah, you don't need it, but yeah, you just gotta you wanna send back um, just the data, right? So I'm just gonna send back the data. So we know that if we get an error, we're gonna handle the error. If we don't, then we're, we we have a success. But um, let's let's try that. So I'm gonna say Postman. Um, if you don't have Postman, um, download and install it. It it helps a lot with um testing um API routes and functions. So I think I've tested this before. So right there. Um, yeah, I tested this earlier. So I'm gonna see localhost, which is my link, right? So I'm gonna send a post request. Okay, a post request. This is the link slash new slash project. So when I get slash new slash project, um, it's gonna call this function, this post request. And in there, I wanna pass in something inside the body, right? So inside the body, I'm gonna say something, right? Um, let's give it a couple things. So we had an image image and uh, I'm gonna google an image we had a title um, title and then I'm just gonna say my project one as a title and then um, a caption so caption my <laughs> I can't think of anything so I'm just gonna make this separate so project one is title and caption as um, that and then um, for an image let's just google a background or even a logo I think a logo will be good right so let's um, yeah we talked about Firebase earlier so let's do Firebase and get the logo PNG so it has no background there we go I'm gonna copy a link to I just want that yeah this one I want a square one. Um, this one? Yeah, perfect. So copy link, copy link address. And let's paste it there. All right. So I'm going to, it takes the three things, right? Make sure these um, name um, align correctly with your project um, schema, right? So image, title, and caption. So image, title, and caption. Let's try and send and see what we get back. Cannot post. Um, why can it not post? Mm. Why can it? Did I not save this? Save. I don't think I saved it. All right, let's restart it again. Error. It cannot import module. Module.js save. Okay. Yeah, I had to save it and restart all this forget to do that. But yeah, it's running now. Let's try and post this again, right? So I'm gonna send 
There we go. So we got a response back. The response back was just the data that we set, right? So that's all I sent back. So that's the response back, and we got this data. Um, let's check our MongoDB um, collection. So, you know, with SQL databases, it's tables, and with NoSQL databases, it's called collections. So let's see what we have. Um, I called it projects and not my collection. Let's do that, that one. Um, my collection. Okay. So if you go back to projects, you're going to see we have one project. It auto assigns an ID. And um, yeah, we do have the data. So we posted it in our database correctly, right? Um, the next thing that I want to do now that we know is, oh, now that we know it posts correctly, um, we're going to try and retrieve the data and see if we do get it, right? So let's create a get function. And this is going to be the last thing for the backend, right? So for the backend, um, I'm going to say, um, sorry, for the get function, I'm going to say after get now. So if I get this URL, let's call this URL get slash projects. Get, I should call this, I should have called this new, but whatever. Um, say post, but okay. Um, so if I ask for projects, um, again, we get back a request and a response. It's a callback function. And then um, I'm going to say model. So model is that model that we created, right? I'm going to say, so let's take the model and let's find something, right? So I'm going to find, um, yeah, I don't want to find anything. I just want to return everything, right? So I don't want to find a specific value. So I'll return everything. And what I'm going to do is just give a callback function. Um, error data, which I get back. Um, that, and then again, I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, let's just copy and paste this. So if I have an error, let's send back an error. If I do not have an error, let's send back a data, right? So this is the same thing as saying if um, error do something um, else, do something else. So yeah, that's just a shortcut that I like using. But yeah, um, let's try that now. Um, so I'm going to have to restart the server, make sure I saved it, npm start, save. And um, let's go to Postman and um, get. So let's try and send. And there we go. I did get a project. So we created a project called um, Project 1 with a caption and an image. And um, yeah, that's it for the back end. Like, all you can, in the next video for the front end, we're going to create a front end and access these um, API routes. But for the back end, that's, that's all. We did the imports. We initialized the uh, um, Express project. We initialized the database, um, MongoDB database. Um, we created the route, so yeah, if you just go to a route, so if I just say that route, if I send back, I'm probably going to get back a hello. There we go. So I send back a hello, um, and then I create um, a couple routes, right? So get projects, let me just um, get projects and um, post projects. And um, yeah, there we go. And uh, finally, we just listen to the port. And um, yeah, that's it for the backend, really. That's, yeah, see ya.